Ladies and gentlemen, coaches and players, I'm your host Rob Schreier and welcome to Hardwood Heroes, your source for Tri-Valley Conference basketball. The playoffs are just around the corner and teams are looking to build some last second momentum before the playoffs start. And if we're talking playoffs, then Alexander has to be a part of that discussion. Last Monday, the Spartans had one more test before they could be crowned TVC champs as they took on Athens. And while the reigning TVC champs took care of business, it was closer than the, ex than the experts expected it to be. And for more on our game of the week, let's bring now to the desk Aaron Laviol. And Aaron, you said the, the key to the game would be uh, their, their, to utilize their inside presence. Um, I mean, was that the game was close all night, but was that really the difference in the end? It was not. Brad, you were, out at the, you were out at the game with me, and what really kept the game close was Athens was able to stop Alexander's offense. The, the, tight zone, uh, the tight zone defense really kept Alexander out of the paint. That's exactly right. The tough zone defense forced, it to tw or forced Alexander into t only 29% shooting, not to, not to add to the fact of the 24 turnovers. Uh, the turnovers, that, that's, a, that's a, a whole, that was the name of the game, absolutely. I mean, the th second, second half, Alexander managed to turn the game around because Athens couldn't get the ball past, mid, past midcourt. Exactly. They deserved a point if they got past half court in the second half. Every single time they went to pass the ball in, that's another, another point down on the stat sheet. Turnover. That's exactly right. The third quarter, that press man to man put the game away for the Spartans. But at the same time in the second half, even though Alexander took over, they still had 14 turnovers of their own. Yep, that's exactly right. And Els set the tone. Julie Els set the tone. When they played, uh, when she boxed out, that girl, uh, what was her name, Erin? Uh, it was Jamie Sindelar. That's she, right. She's their, she... big, she's their biggest post presence. The, Coach Horsley says she can bench 200 pounds. Yeah, exactly. She boxed her out and had she her hit the her floor. Away. Just pushed her away. And Brad, do you, and Brad, do you agree with me on this? Both teams seemed very scared. It was like they were both terrified to lose. You can't go into a game like that. You have to go in. Hoping, hoping to win, playing to win, not just playing not to lose. Yeah, and that's weird for Alexander because Alexander has won every game in the TVC. You wouldn't think that they'd be scared anymore. And you know what? They, they all, Alexander only won, only won by nine too. It was definitely it was definitely a test for them. Maybe a, maybe a bit of a wake up call before they go into um, the tournament. That's exactly right. Yeah, Rob, I'm very I'm very curious to see how both teams do in the tournament. Out, you know, Athens gaining a little bit of confidence, and then out, you know, Alexander, it's it's motiv it's motivation to work harder. And congratulations to the Spartans who have wrapped up their fourth league title in five years. But while Alexander has been on top all year long, the rest of the league has seen another shakeup this week. Megs took a beating this week as Athens beat the Marauders twice in as many days to take over the second spot in the conference. And Nels York just continues to have an up and down year as the Buckeyes upset Megs to start the week but couldn't get it done against last place Wilson on Thursday. But as we mentioned, Athens has had a terrific run as of late. And we're going to uh, go back now to Aaron Laviola with more on the Bulldogs. And back in January, you said that the post, you know, the postponed games with the week where nobody played in the area, you know, that would affect the team. I mean, has it really down the stretch affected the Bulldogs season? It has. And, you know, in the, was, Athens has had a very tough six days. They played four, they played four games and won two of them, both of, both of them against, against Megs. And what, what, they've really, really learned to use, to use their tough defense. They're not the highest scoring team in the league. They need that defense. They've really locked it up. And they, against Megs, they managed to keep, keep them off of the boards. And I think they're finally starting to hit their stride. Coach Horsley told me that against Megs, at half, um, going into the second half, they lined up on the wrong side of the court and then got an easy layup because Megs followed them. You know what, they're starting to have a little bit, little bit of fun. And another thing they really should use when the, as they go into tournament time too, they, it's, a, it's your stereotypical backdoor cut, but it works every single time. Usually it's Cindy Will. She takes the ball and goes to the side and draws a double team to her. And you know what, someone like Raven Klein or Elena Line has an easy layup, after, has an easy layup off of that. They don't run it enough and they, if they ran it more, who knows how some of these previous games they've been playing would have turned out. And I mean, if they keep running, I mean, they've already won five out of their last six conference games. They're on a very good hot streak. We'll look to see what they do in the tournament. Thanks, Aaron. But we now turn to the Nelson York Buckeyes where the rebuilding of the school is going, or is going about as, uh, as smoothly as the reconstruction of the high school. But Nelson York reporter Maddie Kuhn has the latest on the progress of the team with her mid-range jumper question. And Maddie, we talked about Amanda, uh, Amanda Dalton, the first-year coach there. Has her system finally sunk in with her players? Absolutely. After, before, before their late week loss to Wellston, they had won five out of their previous six games with that only loss coming to powerhouse Alexander. 
and their late week loss to Wilson, who they actually dominated previously, shows that they're a little bit burned out. They've played five games in six days, and so let's hope that they can rest those legs before the tournament rolls around. And we talked about this team really trying to turn the corner. They've got one more game against Athens, and it would be, it would be poetic justice for them to get a W over the Athens Bulldogs. What would it mean to kind of circle the wagons here at the end of the season? It would just mean that it would just bring the girls' confidence towards the end of the season, especially the young girls when they played Megs. Maria Martinez has been out with a back injury, and all of the surrounding cast has really stepped up with scoring points, Shelby True, Emily McLean, Lindsay Davis, they're all now playing a role. So they're becoming more of a cohesive unit. And I mean, they're gonna be a team to watch for in the next years, but with the TVC crown already in hand, the Alexander Spartans will march into the playoffs once again as a favorite to get back to the convo for the regional round. But for an inside look at what the postseason has in store for the reigning TVC champs, let's well, fast break now with uh, reporter Brad Holly covering the Spartans. And Brad, what's the seasonal outlook like for this team? Well, Rob, they will be traveling to Wellston in the sectionals. In the sectionals, they played four teams in there, and they've beaten three of them. They've beaten Nelsonville, York, Trimble, and Minford, all by double digits. The one team they did lose to was Zane Trace by 16. But that was kind of an admiration because uh, they lost their identity, or they, they could not find their identity yet because it was only the second game, and they lost four starters from the year before. Now, Rob, what could get them into trouble for next year or for the tournament is if uh, a team could take advantage of their height or, or their lack of height, or if a team can handle the Spartans' uh, patented defensive pressure. And the Spartans will once again be another top seed in the sectional tournament, so things are all but up for the Spartans. But for more on all things TVC basketball, Hardwood Heroes is your one-stop shop. Video recaps, final conference standings, and the latest scores from around the league are all at your fingertips. Also check out our From the Bleachers section for a touching story from Federal Hawking. 